John Oxer from Paintsville Independent Schools, and I'm the innovation coordinator. And um, and so I was privileged to be a part of the ALL group. And um, just like uh, Principal Akers, I went back to some of the things that we did in the Next Generation Learning Academy um, when we were talking about, you know, redesign and talking about just different things. And one of the things that, that we thought was important for our school with my teacher leaders and also with my administration was we wanted to see less and less paper in our classrooms. We wanted to see more um, paperless classrooms, but we knew that it really wasn't practical to be completely paperless. So we decided we were going to do a less paper kind of project. And so what we did is we ended up going with um, Chromebooks. And, and as Jennifer said, we didn't really get money, but we do get ARI money that we can use for one-to-one -one devices. So what I did was I went to the Sidebase Council for the elementary school and for the high school. We only have two schools at Paintsville Independent. We have a K-6 school and a 7-12. And so I went to the Sidebase Councils and I said, hey, I think I found a way that we could be sustainable with one-to-one -one devices because I've been trying to do one-to-one -one devices before iPads were even invented when I was the principal at the elementary school. And my superintendent kept saying, that's a great idea, Oxer, but how are we going to pay for it? You know, and, uh, and so I really didn't have an answer of how, how to do it. But once we got the ARI grant, then I had an answer. And so what I did is I said, look, I'm getting this much money from ARI, and I want to use that as seed money. If you can give me this much, and you can give me this much from each school, we can pull all that money together, and we can start building a one-to-one -one that's for real at our school. And so they both agreed to do that, and they've agreed to do that for the next two years. And so this is a project that we're doing over time. Um, we know that we're going to have ARI money for the next two years, and so they're also going to match that money for the next two years so that we can build the program. So what we did is we bought Chromebooks um, to use in our school. And what we did was at the high school, the 7 through 12, we put them in all of our English language arts classrooms. So we don't, we don't have the one-to-one -one where um, the kid gets a device that is unique to them and they take it home. What we do is we put classroom sets in each of our English language arts classrooms. So the seventh grade English language arts teacher, she has a set. So does the eighth grade teacher, the freshman teacher. And, and see, we're blessed because we're so small. We just re really have one person who does those things. And, you know, if you teach junior English, well, you teach half the sophomores too. <laughs> and that kind of thing. So every kid every day gets exposed to the Chromebook in their classrooms in the high school, 7 through 12. And also what we did at the elementary school was, since we already had the next generation classroom, so we already had one classroom in our fifth grade that was already one-to-one, -one, we used our money at the elementary to make sure all of our fifth and sixth grade classes were one-to-one. -one. And so that's what we did. We had a Chromebook that was available to each student in the fifth and sixth grade and also 7 through 12. And our plan next year, that was for this year, and our plan next year is to go at the elementary down to grade four, and at the high school, we're going to fund the social studies classrooms, and all those classes will have Chromebooks. And then the year after that, we're going to go to science at the high school, and we're going to go down to third grade at the elementary school, and that's our plan to do that for the next two years. But um, one of the reasons that we like that so well is with the Chromebooks is we also wanted to use Google Classroom. We didn't have money to spend on a learning management system like Blackboard or Schoology or any of those kind of things, but Google Classroom is a great price. It's free. And so we were able to use Google Classroom. And um, we were able to also use ARI resources to help get training. Andrew Castle, who is the uh, technology lead here at uh, KVEC, he came to our school in July. He did two days' worth of trainings. Um, I bought the Chromebooks back in July so that we had them early gave them to the teachers so they could use them during the summer to get practice on it because I felt like they had to be trained first. Andrew came, trained them how to use not only Google Classroom, but a lot of the other Google apps, Google Forms that you can use for testing, all kinds of different things, and showed them some stuff. So we were using Google Classroom. Um, and also different Google apps for education. And, and we keep adding apps all the time. I just had um, an English teacher who started using Blogger that's from Google. Um, for her kids to write with. And so we're, we're adding more and more um, Google Apps for education. Um, but we also decided that we didn't want to just wait 
to get a device in every kid's hand. So we encouraged, we sent a letter, we had meetings over the summer, brought parents in. We encouraged kids to bring their own devices. Now, Google Classroom works on your phone, but it's not great on a phone, but it does work really well on an iPad. Also works on a MacBook if you have a MacBook or if you have a, you know, a PC laptop or if you have a Chromebook. So we told our parents, this is what we're buying. We're buying Chromebooks if you want to buy one. But if you already have a laptop, you can bring that. And so right now, about 25% of our kids are bringing their own devices and using them because that's the great thing about um, Google Classroom. It's device agnostic. You know, as long as you can get online, you can use it. And so we have kids that are using their own devices, um, and the other kids are using that. And we also... You know, it, it's great to see that because kids are doing all those kind of different things. Um, and here's one of the neat things that's come about. The less paper movement, it, it's spreading. Like I said, our plan next year is to go to social studies. But um, about a month into school, one of the social studies teachers came to me and said, I'm starting Google Classroom. Is that okay? I said, yeah, that's great. She said, I already got, you know, three or four kids in each class that are bringing their devices. Can you get me some of those old computers um, that you've been working on, and we were trying to repurpose some old ones and put them in my class, and we're like, yeah, we'll put some old ones in there that have internet access, and and so what she did is she went ahead and started, and we had another teacher who went ahead and started Google Classroom. They didn't want to wait till next year to get started, and and so it's kind of spreading, and our teachers are doing phenomenal things with it, and it's just like um, like Andrew came and presented for us. Well, when he had his blended learning pan, he came and got some of my teachers and brought them and said, would you show people what you're doing? And they hadn't used Google Classroom until July. But you know how teachers are. They're great. They're creative. And so those teachers started using it, started learning. They're teaching each other at our school. And they've also been able to share with, you know, their colleagues around the region. And that gives them a lot of confidence. And so a lot of good things are happening with the uh, less paper movement that we're having. And, and that's the end of mine. And what we really wanted to do, I kind of forgot, um, what we wanted to do was do something that was sustainable. And we really feel like what we're doing right now is sustainable. So does anybody have any questions about it? Yes. Yes, it can. We, all, we, we did set it up for our school, but um, yes, uh, an individual teacher, like if nobody else in the building is doing it, you can set it up for Google Classroom, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, my um, social studies teacher who said, hey, I want to do this, um, what she did is um, uh, she, she found an online copy of her, of her book. She got that loaded up to her Google Classroom. Um, she uses blogs in there in her classroom. Um, she's also, um, she's just doing so many things that, you know, it's just, she's just moved so far so quick, I guess is kind of what the really amazing thing was because, you know, she took books that, and, and you know how it is, we, we don't get to buy books as often as we'd like, but she was able to use the digital copies that we have and upload that, and, um, and so the kids like it so much better, they can access it right there on their laptop, on their phone, you know how kids are, they don't care to read on their phone or their iPad or any of those kind of things, and so that was one of the neat kind of things, just looking at things differently, figuring out, um, you know, asking the kids, how would you like to do this, and then letting them kind of decide how to do it. Um, one of the teachers um, who has the Mondo pad, um, he's got an Apple TV hooked up, and so when kids do, pre this doesn't really have to do with the Google um, Classroom, but, you know, this is an innovative kind of thing he does, is lets his kids, when they do presentations, if they want to throw their report up on with the Apple TV, they can just do it that way instead of standing in the front, you know, and if they have a, you know, an iMovie presentation on their phone, the whole class can view it you know, up there, and they can sit back here as opposed to standing up and talking like this. So there's lots of neat things like that going on. And it's just, it's kind of like, um, you know, Cassandra said, once you put it in their hands, then they make all kinds of things happen. You know, they're the creative ones. Do you have something, Vivian? Yeah, did you have any resistance because of what everyone needed to do this? Well, you, you, I, I strategically chose the places I did okay. because, you know, I knew the language arts department would be really excited about that. Um, and so, you know, sometimes I think you have to do that. You have to say, hey, and we did it last year with our next generation, and people saw that what was going on. And I think that if they see success in certain places, and so 
um, there will be some resistance still, I'm sure, but um, I tried to place it in places where people would accept it to start with. They were already looking to do those kind of things before we, you know, tried to push somebody who wasn't ready in there. It's kind of like that, you know, analogy on the island. Some people are out there in the water. Some, you know, you just kind of go with those folks first, and that's kind of what we did. Yeah. Anybody else? All right. Thank you.